Hi, I'm Tony Garitano, founder of Progress in Lending Association, and welcome to another edition of our video newscast. Today we're going to talk about some common problems that the mortgage industry faces, and some solutions for those problems. A big issue is the secondary market, or the lack thereof. As you know, the secondary market is being propped up by the federal government. They're in control of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and what Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are not doing, FHA is doing. When is the secondary market going to come back? Our straight talkers have some insight and some news to share. Recently, I read an article that quoted someone from FHFA, I have to make sure I get these acronyms correct. Of course. Uh, about a new secondary market um, that would be coming out before year end of 2012. Have you heard anything about that? What's that all about? You know what? I read that article and I was a little bit alarmed, intrigued, and inquiring minds want to know. So I started reaching out to some of our customers and partners okay. uh, because I was very concerned and am concerned that if there is going to be this new secondary market, um, is there going to be an electronic marketplace uh, within that new yep. secondary market? I mean, as you know, we've spent you know a decade building all these standards, etc. And so I've been reaching out, and, and what, what I'm hearing um, in the marketplace are various things, but really good information. Uh, one of the concerns is that uh, you know Wall Street is uh, quietly uh, moving back into mm -hmm. its place as what's called a repo buyer, uh, okay. whereas Wall Street will go to a lender and pledge to buy a certain amount of assets and then pledge to sell them back to that lender in a given period of time much like a warehouse lender. Oh, okay. Um, okay. But you know what, those repo buyers, they're not aware of e-mortgages and how the uh, Mercy Registry works, etc. And so my concern is how do we educate these major players that are going to get back into the marketplace um, on the benefits of the electronic marketplace. So uh, th that's, th that's something that's near and dear to my heart. Well, that's, that's a very good point because we've been struggling to get the community that we know today to accept electronic mortgages and so now we're going to have some new players come in and we have another big education ahead of us to make sure that they're aware of the benefits of electronic mortgages. Correct. So old players coming back in. So they're really not new but they're right. old coming back right. in. So uh, that will be a challenge to us and one that I'm taking on and I hope to get the MBA involved in and progress in lending and uh, you know. Uh, so we'll look forward to hearing from our viewers on your uh, your opinions on that because it's a very important subject. Yep, very good. Thank you. As we continue to talk about common industry problems, one of the big issues that every lender faces is switching their loan origination system. I talked to Mechanics Cooperative Bank about this process, and Tracy Hallisey over there actually said that it was a smooth process. Here are her thoughts. started to test probably about three months ago now and on my side there's only two of us that are on the implementation team right now currently because we're in, it, it's in the beginning stages of testing so we really haven't gotten a whole team together yet um, once we get through the, the pre-test days mm -hmm. maybe probably in another month or so we're going to start to do parallel testing and hopefully by July 1st we'll get we'll get our team on our side um, you know in this in the system as far as the remote lender team, they've been great. The, um, their implementation team is incredible to work with. They, they hold your hand, they're, they're there for every step of the way. They've been just awesome. At another bank that I worked at, which the implementation probably went about five years ago, um, it was very, very different. You know, we went on site and did a lot of the work there versus the remote lender people coming to our bank and doing the work for us. Um, building products, um, building rates, just building the system itself, doing the screens, fields, mapping, all the stuff that was uh, our responsibility at the other bank, it's very different here. They do that for you, they make it much easier. Especially building, like I said, tables and products and pricing.
five systems, and we narrowed it down to remote. From a systems um, capability, from a compliance standpoint, from a functionality standpoint, it has everything that you would want. Audit tracking, it's, it's totally customizable. They can do anything that you want, really. If they don't have it, they do it. This is the point in our video newscast where we take your questions. Michael Hyman, the Chief Strategy Officer at Progress and Lending Association and the founder of Next Level Advisors, talks to you candidly about the latest and greatest marketing strategies that will help you grow your business. Today's question is, Michael, I keep hearing the term content marketing. What is content marketing? Well, content marketing is a technique of creating and distributing relevant and valuable content to attract, acquire, and engage a specific target audience with the objective of ultimately driving a profitable customer interaction. Basically, content marketing is the art of communicating with your customers and prospects without selling. The key there being without selling. So instead of pitching your products and services, you're developing and delivering information that makes your buyer more informed. The essence of this content strategy is the belief that if we as businesses deliver consistent, ongoing, valuable information, that ultimately when that person is ready, they're going to make a buying decision for us. Before we close, I want to talk to you about some numbers, as I usually do. If we're discussing industry problems, one of the biggest problems that lenders say they face is new regulation. But actually, new regulation around HARP 2.0 is helping the industry. What do I mean? Closed refis with LTVs of 95% plus doubled to 7.1% in the month of April, according to Ellie May. That was as compared to 3.6% in the month of March. What does that mean? HARP 2.0 is having an impact. So not all regulation is bad regulation. And with that, this edition of our video newscast comes to a close. Until next time, so long.